Hey guys, thank you for tuning into the channel once again. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you want to keep up to date with the latest from the channel. This is going to be a bit of a different video for me. I'm going to talk about an exercise um, which was sparked by the live stream I did last week on Thursday evening and I was asked in the comments about kind of a really good exercise that can carry you through. Um, I think it kind of carries you through a career was the idea or something like that. Um, but this is the exercise that I've used for absolutely years um, and I used to hate it But I think it's probably the one exercise that's been most culpable for my improvement as a bass player um, To improve my consistency improve my technique and to also improve my knowledge of the fretboard and my knowledge of music theory um, And it all just is one exercise Which is very simple and I wanted to really dive into it and explain it more fully than I did on Thursday because I kind of was doing it on a live stream trying to get it quickly across and you couldn't really hear what was going on properly um, so I wanted to just be able to do that and show you exactly what I was doing and kind of give you the reasons why. This was a technique that was shown to me um, when I was in my teens and I hated it and I didn't ever make the effort to make it work in my early teens anyway um, and it was only later on as I headed towards 17, 18 that it made sense and I, I really put the effort in and made it work. So the idea is to play all of your major scales all the way around the circle of fifths. Um, some people call it the circle of fourths, um, either way. Um, and so it's just to simply play every note in the major scale all the way up, all the way back down. And then you move to the next interval on the circle of fifths. So you'd go around one way or the other. I always choose to go from C then to F, B flat, E flat, A flat, and then so on. So uh, that's the way I go. If you don't know what the circle of fifths is or you haven't come across it before, uh, Google it, circle of fifths, cycle of force, either, um, and it will come up with a circle and it will have all of the different um, notes, all 12 notes, um, and also the relative keys, and it will show you um, the major and minor, and also all of the sharps and flats within that key. Um, but we don't really need to get bogged down with that stuff. Um, in my experience as a bass player, very rarely is someone going to really want to dive in on your music theory and technique. They're going to pretty much want you to come and stand in a room and make it happen or read the chart. Um, but, you know, that's no reason not to delve into that stuff, but we don't necessarily need to get bogged down in that stuff. The idea of this exercise is to work on the technique, uh, on the left hand, on the right hand, and to expand the fretboard as well. And it's going to make us comfortable playing in all 12 keys. Um, using the major scale. Everything that we play comes from the major scale, whether you're playing the major scale or the minor scale, the major scale is going to encompass almost everything you're going to need. And you doing this exercise, you're going to play every note you could pretty much ever need on a bass. Um, and the idea of it is we can move it all around the instrument because it's a symmetrical pattern. And that's one of the joys of playing the bass is that we can learn one scale shape or pattern and we can then move it around the bass and apply it in whatever way you want to, whichever pitch you want to, and in whichever octave you want to. Obviously, fingering will change over time, but what it can do is we only have to learn one set of fingerings and get comfortable with it, and then we just change the root note, and we've got that whole set of fingering again in a different key. So we've got, you know, you learn the major scale once in one key, and all you have to do is be able to move that around, shift it on the instrument, and you've got all 12 keys. So. In the most simple form, the major scale is going to be made of the root. I'm going to play it in C here, so that's root C on the third fret on the A string. The second, which is D, E, F, G, A, B, and C again. So that's. So if you haven't already, start there, start there and learn the major scale and get used to that. Um, but moving forward, the way we use it in this exercise is to play that all the way up, all the way back down, and then shift to the next note in the circle of fifths. So one side is your sharp keys, one side is your flat keys. From your perspective, that would be flat, 
that sharp that side, flat this side. Um, and to be there, I go that way. Um, so that's gonna be. So there we go, that's kind of the idea, is to go around all through those keys. What are we looking at there? We're looking at the left hand technique. So we were looking at getting all those fingerings, staying consistent with the fingerings. So fingering should, uh, when you're using this exact pattern here that I'm using, should be second finger, fourth finger, first finger, second finger, fourth finger, first finger, third finger, fourth finger. And then using the same fingers, exactly the same, all the way back down. So that's fourth finger, third finger, one, first finger, four, two, one, four, one. So again, that's one, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, four, three, one, four, two, one, four, one. I don't do that very often, so describing that with numbers is really hard. But that's not the frets, that is the fingers. So each of those one, four, one, four, three, etc., are the fingers that we're going to use. That's with one being the index finger, two being that middle finger, three being the third finger, and fourth being the little pinky finger. So that's the best way to get the right hand technique. Make sure that's consistent, make sure we're doing that. Um, things to look out for, something that I do all the time is this little pinky finger likes to float up. Um, so I'm always trying to practice keeping that down as low as possible, close to the fretboard, so that when we're up to a quicker tempo, uh, that can you know, quickly get to the note and make make it all happen. Um, trying to keep the finger behind the back of the neck as well. I think that generally does help technique. That's something that I know I slip on sometimes, and it also depends on bases. And I know that sometimes when I'm gigging a lot, that slips. I'll practice with it in the right position, and by the time you're gigging, there's so much other stuff going on that it's not fully focused on my technique sometimes slips um, and I definitely know that I pay for that so that's something that I always try to keep in mind as well. Um, other thing with the left hand is to keep those notes nice and long so making sure that each of those notes there isn't a gap in between we're not kind of doing this because that's not really giving control over the note length we want to go distance from each we're switching very precisely from note to note um, so that's that from a kind of left hand perspective uh, just keeping that nice consistent fingering is really important and will really help your help with this exercise and it also helps develop strength in the hand because the hand is having to stay in that position for so long that you're really helping the muscles in the thumb you're helping the muscles in the fingers helping it stretch uh, you want to keep the hand as relaxed as possible and just allow that to stretch. Don't tense up in the hand or tense up any muscles here. Just keep it nice and loose all the way through. On the right hand, uh, floating finger is one thing I love to practice with this exercise. Um, so using the thumb to mute the other strings. Uh, so I think as you can see there, I was, uh, if you watch my right hand, Is kind of floating over the E 
to anchor it and as I shift up that thumb moves across like this um, which is a, a jack paper story technique very famously used that um, and I've, I really picked it up from playing five strings a lot um, and that just really helps keep you know make sure you've not got any sympathetic noises or anything buzzing around um, when you're playing so you're doing this exercise really a nice controlled way controlling the whole instrument controlling the length of the notes controlling what's not being played and making sure that's not resonating or ringing either um, and just really the other thing on the right hand is keeping the consistency with your fingers um, making sure that the tone is nice and consistent so you don't have kind of say you know the C down here is kind of nice and then when you're at the top you've kind of left your fingers all anchored and you're, you're all kind of toppy using the end of the finger you want to just keep it consistent and move the hand across the strings so I'm just going to run you that through that one more time a little bit quicker um, the exercise and hopefully that's given you some ideas on how you can use this exercise I will do some more of these videos I think because I really like talking about technique I like talking about these elements of the bass rather than just talking about gear um, so I'll dive into this more but there are so many ways once you start doing this that you can open up the fretboard you can open up how you want to play these and you can start skipping notes you can start doing all sorts of little exercises and I'll show you some variations on this exercise over time and how it might be useful to drop into your playing but I thought while I was at it and while I'd thought about the uh, question that had been asked on Thursday I thought I'd just drop this video out there and just keep doing these little tidbits of help and tips that some of you might not be interested in at all but some of you might really want and might help you along your way or just give you another way of thinking about something so let me know in the comments anything you want to know uh, and let me know anything you struggle with and any exercises that I might be able to think of to help you with those problems put that one in the comments below and uh, I'm just going to leave you with a little quick speedy one round and um, the whole exercise and if you enjoyed this hit the like button and hit that subscribe button if this is your first time watching one of my videos so thank you and I'll see you in the next one.